Hi folks, Nat here from Living Entertainment. We're bringing in the new year with an all new product from Audio Lab. It's a streaming amplifier, it's a CD player, it's a digital to analog converter or has a DAC built in. It does everything you would want in a modern hi-fi product, almost. Now the Omnia has a whole lot going on and I really need to sort of unravel it all. Now I'm going to be doing this in sections and there will be time codes below so you can skip straight to those sections if you are only interested in specific parts of what I'm talking about today. Firstly, I'm going to talk about the obvious one which is aesthetics. Secondly, I'm going to talk about features and how you can use the product. Thirdly, I'm going to talk about sound quality and speaker pairings. Lastly, I'm going to talk about usability and who I think this product is actually for. So aesthetics, as you can tell, this is a bit different from Audio Lab's normal look. It's got those curved edges, which is a little bit of a separation from say the 6000A, um, the CDT, the 8 series, those sorts of products, which are all typically fairly square. So it's nice to see something a little bit different from Audio Lab. Additionally, I believe this is the first time Audio Lab has put a screen on the front. Now this is great, it has a couple of little cool features in there where you've got some VU meters, uh, which you can get a digital or an analog. Additionally, you can access the menu through there nice and clearly. It makes it very easy to navigate around the menu. Now, one thing you will notice is there's no volume knob on the front. This has gone to a push button style, or obviously you can use the remote, or you can use the DTS PlayFi app if you like. Now, the disadvantage to that for me is I like that feeling and I like the speed of being able to turn a knob. The advantage though is that it does give this clean aesthetic at the front. And also, if you are putting these into a cabinet, you don't have to worry about the depth that you do uh, need to consider with other products with those larger volume knobs at the front. Now, features. As I mentioned before, this product has a whole lot going on. So probably the most obvious one is it is a streaming amplifier. This product particularly is good at doing Spotify Connect. That's the way that I tend to use DTS PlayFire products. Now, uh, for you that are purists and you want a higher quality, uh, you do need to use PlayFi's dedicated app being Tidal and then going into it via that way, which isn't quite as good of experience as using Spotify Connect directly. But if you are a Spotify user, which I believe something like 60 or 70% of people, correct me if I'm wrong there, actually use Spotify on a daily basis, this product is perfect for you. It works faultlessly time and time again and uh, I think it's really good, particularly knowing that eventually Spotify are going to go to high res. So the limitations that Spotify had previously will go away and obviously just make that connection even better here in the Omnia. Secondly, the other really obvious one is the CD player. Some people say CDs are dead or they don't use them, particularly people that are of younger years. But I can tell you here in the shop, we have people walking in every single day wanting CDs. And yes, most of the time they do sound better than streaming. So if you've got a good CD collection and you wanna put those on and spin them, you're gonna get a great result here. Now internally, the Omnia has shared the development that they've made in the past with the CDT and the 6000 series from Audio Lab. Now that is a great CD transport and it's a no brainer that they've put it inside here. So uh, you're going to get a good result. Next thing moving along would have to be some of the digital inputs on the back. So you've got PC USB, you've got digital coax, optical. Additionally, there is a USB-A. Now for you vinyl enthusiasts, there is a phono stage built in for moving magnet cartridges. A power amp in, so for those that want to hook up your two channel stereo amp to your home theater using home theater bypass, you can do it with this product. You've also got preamp outs, which mean you can hook up an external power amplifier if you want more than the 50 watts on board here, which is super handy. Additionally, via those same pre outs, you can hook up um, one or two subwoofers if you like as well. Now, a little bit of a unique feature that some of you may use is the digital pass-through via optical and coax. 
Now this would be particularly handy if you have an external digital to analog converter slash headphone amplifier that you wanted to utilize. And I can't say I know many products that are actually doing that digital pass through. So a great little feature to have there. Now lastly, this product does have triggers. So if you did want to ever hook up an external power amp, it does have a 12 volt trigger out to trigger on that amplifier. So that pretty much rounds up most of the things you can do here. Now, what it doesn't have is HDMI ARC or eARC. And I've got to say, this is a trend that pretty much happens across the board uh, in Hi-Fi, with the exception of a few products actually featuring it, such as the Blue Sound Node. Now, a product at this level obviously does perform a bit better than the, the Power Node. But if you did want to hook up your TV, you would have to use the optical cable, and that would mean you'd have a separate remote for volume control. Now this might not bother you at all, but for some people that functionality would really be appreciated having that HDMI CC control or the volume up and down. So please manufacturers consider HDMI ARC in Hi-Fi products. We don't want people buying inferior products such as AV receivers for their two channel Hi-Fi system. You're going to get a better result in your two channel system if you're using a proper integrated amplifier it would be great if we had that HDMI ARC feature. Or if you don't want to pay the HDMI licensing fees, which I suspect is the holdup, why not put IR Learning in the product so you can use another remote to do the volume up and down on it. That'd be pretty handy as well. So if you've got a TV remote, you can teach it that volume up and down code and away you go. I think a brand called a Relic do that, in fact, and it works very successfully. Now let's talk about the most exciting part. Let's talk about the sound. Well, no surprises here. I like the sound of it. Audio Lab have a really good knack of punching out great sounding products. It has a solid baseline, plenty of detail throughout, but it's never got a fatiguing sound to it. Now to talk about more about the sound, I need a reference in order to do that. So during our listening sessions, I actually paired it up with a few different speakers and I compared it against a similarly priced featured amplifier in the Roxanne Atessa. Both of these products here in Australia retail roughly around the $3,000 and they both have streamers built in, both have digital to analog converters. However, the Omnia does have that CD player. So that is something that does separate the two. Now, when I'm listening to this, I was initially listening to it on the Wharfdale Diamond 12.4s to see what it does to a fairly, uh, you know, I don't wanna say budget, but a fairly entry level product and I was very happy with that sound. It was just pleasing like the Diamond series always are. Nothing was out of place, nothing was too lumpy. It just sounded easy and good. Now, I suspect when Audio Lab designed this product, they had it more in mind for the Evo series. So we brought across the Evo 4.2 stand mount speakers. They're a three-way. It really opened up that sound. It got a lot more open throughout the uh, treble and the bass got a bit more taut. Now, what I did notice though was a bit of a trend in the mid-range. And I suppose that is a fair statement to make that Wharfdale are probably the mid-range kings. If you if you want that sort of more forward mid-range, a Wharfdale product's probably going to do that for you. And the Audio Lab certainly accentuated that a little bit. Now, where I really loved the combination was for Americana folk sort of style music. Lucas Nelson, the Teskey Brothers, bands like that, I just, I just really enjoyed it. I got more emotion out of the music because of that mid-range presence you could feel it in their throat noises and things like that, that really popped out. Now, when I was listening to that genre via the Roxanne and the Monitor Audio Silver 100s in comparison, it was a bit different. There was definitely more air to the sound, maybe a bit more space between the instruments, but it didn't quite have the emotional reach that the Omnia did in that Americana genre. However, when we moved across to House and I listened to a few Tiesto songs for you house lovers out there, definitely appreciated the extra solidness that we got out of the Silver 300s in this case, paired up with the Roxanne versus the Omnia with the larger 4.4 Evos. It just had a real solid sound to the bottom end 
that I don't believe the, the, the 4.4s could match the silver 300s. Now, we changed that up and we put the Omnia on the silvers and we did get a little bit more of that mid-range presence, funny enough, so a little bit more, but it probably took away what made the Roxanne and silver combinations so good. And then we put it back over to the 4.4s and it just felt more natural, even though it didn't have that, that solidness. We did our due diligence and we played a bit of sort of heavy metal, sort of hard rock. Uh, first off, we listened to Tool. Now, yeah, that, that presence in the bass line that they have that's so strong, it was just that the Omnia and the 4.4s was just chunky. It just sounded, yeah, it, you got the emotion of that, that song and, and I really love that combination. Put it over to the Silvers. The lower bass was once again a little bit more present, but it just didn't have that sound of the strings on the bass guitar that made it give you that, you know, the verve of the song. So I suppose what I'm getting at is the Omnia and the Evo Ranger speakers are really good with you know, raw live instruments. If you, if you like rock, you like metal, uh, you like Americana folk, it's an awesome pairing and, and emotionally it grabs you, which I think is the most important thing. Not enough people talk about the emotion that uh, pairings make or, or particular products make. And in this case, um, it is a big thumbs up from me. However, if you are more into electronica, I would suggest pairing this up with a different set of speakers. Uh, maybe those silver range speakers, the 300s or the 500s. But then again, if you didn't have uh, an amplifier already, I would probably say go towards the Roxanne in that case. So overall, is this the best product out of the two? Well, no. And yes, it's better for certain genres, but not all genres. It just comes down to what you like. Both products are remarkably good. As far as connectivity goes today, Blasphemy, I did it via Spotify Connect because this product works particularly well that way. However, the Roxanne does have Spotify built into it as well, so it was nice and easy. So that's the way I compared it today. If you'd like us to follow up with a dedicated video on more speaker pairings outside of the ones that I've previously mentioned, we're happy to do that. Just put a comment uh, below and we'll try to do that for you. Now let's talk about the usability. Firstly, I'll start with CDs. If you want to use a CD with the product, it is remarkably easy. It is a tray, so simply press the eject button, put your CD on, press play, away you go, and it is 100% gapless playback. Moving on, if you want to use one of the digital inputs, simply by toggling through the input button on the back, you can get to one of those inputs, easy peasy. Now, the phono stage works really well. It's very compatible with the vast majority of cartridges out there. Streaming services, once again, I'll mention Spotify Connect works seamlessly and it is also gapless playback as well. Now, if you want to use things like Tidal, Cobuzz, Deezer, you will need to use that via the PlayFi app. And you can do that by going in there, adding that music service through it. Now, unfortunately, they are not 100% gapless and particularly now after they've done a bit of an update it's not so much of a large gap anymore. So for the vast majority of the people that are using a product like this I just don't think it's going to be that big of uh, an issue and that probably rolls into who do I think this product is for. Well I would say this product mostly applies to people that just don't want to deal with the stacks of different boxes you know, to get this product, you would, if you were to go a purest path, you'd have an integrated amplifier, you would have a separate CD player, you would have a separate streamer, and possibly even sometimes a separate DAC. So you're talking about like four separate boxes. And when you're buying it like that, it does add up to a lot of money. So to get all of that with the quality of a product like this for the money they're asking, I think it's an absolute bargain, to be honest, it is, it's just, you've got to spend a lot more money on separates to get a much better sound. Now, this product is also for somebody that maybe has been out of hi-fi for a while or is just getting into it and they want to skip that first step. They want to go straight into a good quality product and have it do everything. Because not everyone is limited to just wanting to play CDs or just wanting to stream music. Sometimes we want to use different media and this product allows us to do that and it allows it to do it very well. 
Additionally, if you don't have the space to house all those products, this product will really suit you. Like I said, it's four boxes in one, so if you're limited on space or you just don't like the look of all those boxes, it's a great option for you. Now, something else that I mentioned earlier is the actual overall depth of the Omnia. Because it doesn't have that volume knob on the front, it does allow you to fit it into most standard buffet units or side tables if you like. Well, that just about sums it up for the Omnia. If you'd like to know anything more about it, we're certainly here to help you. You can contact us by visiting www.lenc.com.au and hitting that message us button. You can give us a call if you like, Obviously you can come in store or you can simply comment below. We're here to help guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now. Also, press the like button and subscribe. Let's talk about sound BB. Unfortunately, they are not 100% gapless. Whether that really matters or not, mm, I don't think so. Keyboard warriors go.